Pool Perfect Max from Natural Chemistry is the premier weekly maintenance product for all pools. This 3-in-1 technology enhances clarity, maximizes pool program efficiency, and prevents problems. Take every pool care program to the max with Pool Perfect Max. Whether training a new employee or enhancing your own knowledge, Natural Chemistry offers a comprehensive online training program that covers everything from basic water chemistry to maximizing efficiency and troubleshooting. Visit www.ncprotraining.com today. I guess we're just fine. Then, I, then we're stuck with this flower. I was trying to find a different picture that was going to make me happy, but I guess we're stuck with this glitter fucking flower. Who chose to put the glitter fucking flower there in the first place? I chose the glitter flower because the fucking pool in the background was pissing me off more because I didn't want to look at that fucking pool. And What's so the I changed it to this picture so that I could have a picture that wasn't pissing me off in the process of me finding another picture. And you just decided we're going. So I guess I guess we're stuck. With, like I said, we're stuck with the flower. What's the How name? Anybody's ever going to fucking watch this. I'm in such a bad mood. Oh, my what? God. What's the name of the lady in Mexico? I think she's an artist and she had the big, thick one eyebrow. Le um, you know who I'm talking Frida, about, right? Frida Kahlo. Are you do you are you making fun of my unibrow right now? Not your unibrow. The picture behind you and your unibrow. Very Frida, whatever you said. Kahlo. Hello. I don't. I don't believe she was Mexican. I might she's be wrong. Celebrated in Mexico. I okay, don't know where I'm she's wrong. from. I know you're going to Google it, so it doesn't really I'm matter. Googling we it right now because I'm not getting corrected. While, while Andrea is googling, welcome Mexican. Okay, so sorry. To the Talking my bad. Pools I was podcast. Wrong. Rudy was right. Happy to have you here. Thank you for joining <sighs> us. We appreciate you. Even though I've had a shit day, I also appreciate you. And you know what? I hope I feel better by the end of this recording because I'm pretty fucking mad. She is steaming. Her face is purple. If you can't see it, she blends in with the ugly fucking glitter flower behind her head. First of all, this is pink flower and it is not the ugly. only thing that stands out is this her was going to be my logo at one point. <laughs> Good move. Dodge the bullet there. <laughs> we have something new. <sighs> It's oh, on my head. You. We have hats. Is it a toupee? They are nice hats. They're embroidered. It looks and they're like actually a nice lightweight. It's actually a nice hat. It's kind of one of those low cut hats. And, and it's a fitted cap too. It's not like the, the aerated baseball cap. No. Right? Is it fitted? Yes. Well, no, it let has a thing in the back. Oh, Hold on. let me see it. Oh, okay. I, see, I was wrong again. Why don't you show me this shit before I start talking, Rudy? Tell Jesus. everybody what it says, because I don't have my headphones on right now. It says, what the flock? Talking Pools Podcast. That's right. So it's Talking Pools Podcast hat. This is what we're going to do. We want to give them away. And it has our cute little water drop logo guy. Does he have a name? Um, You should come up with one for him. I don't right, have I one. Andrea will be in charge of naming the water drop guy. And until then, we want to give these away. And to get one, it's simple. All you have to do is send an email to talkingpools at gmail.com. Let me say that again. Talkingpools at gmail.com. You guys have probably heard us say it a lot. So send us an email to, to talkingpools at gmail.com. Tell us the name of your company. Give us your address. And then ask us your pool-related question. Has to be something related to the pool business. And you have to be a pool service professional. I mean, in can order it be to... related to the podcast? Because that's, you know. Well, it can Does be related. Be... Okay, fine. It can be related to the podcast. Whatever. As long as it's podcast-related. If we use your question... We're going to send you Thank a hat. you. Thanks for slamming the fucking door. That wasn't for you. God. That was for other people. We appreciate, we don't care if you slam the fucking door, only the people standing behind Andrea. So in the midst of me trying to do a nice thing and give <laughs> away hats, there is a barrage of foul <laughs> language <laughs> that we never heard before. 
<laughs> You've never heard me say that before ever. I'm a sweet tongued, nice, never, um, never me. Never she me. can't Sorry. even get it out herself. You're going to have to, you're going to have to edit that and just, listen, just start all over. What listen, are we doing? I'm so wait, away hats. what hat, is this on your hat head? On head? It's what a do you hat have on your head. Andrea? Oh my God. I'm not starting over. I'm leaving all that in. You have to be a verifiable pool service company in order to get a hat. We do not want these on the heads of homeowners. So that's all you have to do to get the hat. What do you think? What if, but I'm a homeowner technically. Am I not allowed to wear it? But you're also a pool professional. Please. Don't I don't have a do pool. This. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm pool, just kidding. I'm just you teasing. Work as I a... think it's great. I want a hat. And if you want a hat as well, just email us. All right. Send us a question. Tell Rudy that the hats are great because they are. All right. So something pissed you off today. Who's shitting your cornflakes? Let's get it out before we go on. Literally everyone. Literally not, everyone. That is not an answer. It gives us. I'm not. I don't want to say too much because. Oops. I dropped something. I don't want to say too much because. I don't and... necessarily like to be the one that bitches about people. But when shit pisses me off, like I just can't let it go. Right. If you've been listening to the show for the past two and a half years, you'll have noted that Andrea doesn't like to bitch about people. <laughs> Shut up. If it's got, if you know, if I need to say something, I got to say something. All right, so, we'll get it out. Usually, usually I feel like you're going to take the opposite side here. I feel like you're going to think you're going to you're going to piss me off let's, even more. <laughs> let's just tear off the bandaid, blurt it out there so everybody can hear, get some good advice from the listeners. Well, I don't need advice. They could email in their thoughts like they could be your Dr. Phil. I don't need advice, but you can definitely send me, you know, hey, we know exactly what you're going through and you're definitely Andrea, valid. That everyone nice. is on the edge of their seats <laughs> waiting for this information. All right, now, so you've hyped it up too much. Okay, so I've been I've been dealing with training some people recently. Now, I'm not training anymore. I'm officially done with it, okay? But I still have kind of I had this issue today where the new guy that I trained last week and he came, he actually worked at one of the companies that I had also worked at. So it's not like this, he wasn't, it's not like he was new. He's not like new at cleaning pools. He calls me at 1215, all right, and was like, hey, I still, I have, <clears throat> I have three pools left and I only have one jug of chlorine left. Now, first of all, he had 16 pools to do today. 12, 15, he's only got three left, but also only one one jug of chlorine left. So I told but, him, put chlorine in. If it's low, put chlorine in. And then even if you like, if you happen to remember that it's a salt pool and it's got a chlorine level, then you should be fine. You know, otherwise put chlorine in it. So back to the story. He calls me at, like I said, 12, 15, three pools left and only one jug of chlorine left. And he was like, well, which one do you want me to put chlorine in? And I was like, bro, like, first of all, so I I was trying to be nice. I was trying not to be mad. And I was like, just split the jug between these two pools because I know they're going to need it. And then the very last pool, it's, it's a salt pool. It shouldn't need it. But then he calls me from that very last pool. And you know what he said to me? No. It needs chlorine. Of course you do. But you should be able to read my mind by now. <laughs> he says, it needs chlorine. It doesn't have any. It has no chlorine in the salt pool. Can I put a tab in the skimmer? Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. So you do the... have a right to be in a bad mood. I don't know how you're going to handle Thank it. You. Are you going to go to your boss with it? Um, If I get asked for sure, I'm not going to like go run tell or anything because it's been handled. Like He's going to go back to the pool tomorrow. There's already like, there's no... um. Personally, I think about that. He's definitely going back there. I'm not going to go out of my way. Personally, I think sending a new hire out with a senior employee for training that part of their duty is to assess that employee, their skills, etc. And then if there's notable 
problems to bring that back to management. So that and way I have they can done that. Oh, this way they oh, can I come did. up with a plan to work on it or get rid of the person. Either but one. See, I'm not I'm not gonna have to bring this up because he already had his interaction with the girl in the office. So it's okay. not gonna be something I'm even gonna have to bring up. But it, I did <laughs> I did have the conversation with her. I was like, I was so aggravated at 1215. And then he got back to the shop like an hour later. 16 pools in six hours? Uh, I guess he got there hard to a do. little bit before seven. It is hard to do. So He got there before seven. On a different note, maybe this will cheer you up. People do, and I'm talking when I say people, I mean manufacturers in the pool industry. People do, from time to time, send you products to check out. Correct. Me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's very, what I very talk seldom. It's like it's like no, I don't get a lot of stuff. I want to talk about that today. I okay. want the good, the bad, and the ugly. These are all products that we're going to talk about from people that do not sponsor the podcast, where they sent us something to check out, and it either was good for the swimming pool service industry or not. That's all I want to know. Good for service or not. If it's not good for service, it doesn't mean it's a bad product, just not a good service product. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I want to start with one of the first things somebody sent me years ago. I was sent a solar breeze. I think they call solar it aerial, aerial now. It floats along the surface. It's solar powered. It skims the water for you. Ah. Uh. You've seen yes. them, they look like a big old boat and they just kind of go around mm -hmm. the pool, kind of almost yes. like a, a skateboard. So I wanted to hate the product. <laughs> I did, mm -hmm. because this is one of the folks where in some of their earlier advertising, and this is what I saw and what prompted me to call the person, because I called to complain, is <laughs> that his ad said, now you can fire your pool person. Ah. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> your ad says now you can get rid of the pool person and this will do everything for you well i called i complained i wanted to talk with him about it he says how about i send you one and he sent it to me and like i said i wanted to hate it but didn't i didn't you do the an unboxing video of i this? did and i used okay. it and i really did want to hate this thing but it, it arrived they have different right. versions of them now i've okay. i have them in like one or two of my pools Okay, so then you can contribute to this talk. So Not first off, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. So it's heavy, which automatically in my mind, for no apparent reason, implies that it's well-made because that's how people take heavy things, well-made. So I pick it up. It's heavy. Okay, I'm looking at this okay. thing. All put together already. Don't have to do a damn thing. Just plop oh, it nice. in the water. Perfect, because the worst two words in the English language is assembly required. So I take this thing, set it like adrift. It. Set you like putting things together? You yes, lie. I do. You lie. I so swear. Send this out afloat in my pool to test it out. And it starts chugging along and it does good. It got stuck up on but top you have of a, my don't you have a screened in pool? I threw dirt in there. Oh, okay. To test it out. Of course, of I course do have a would. screened in pool. But I'm testing this to see if it's a good product for service. It got stuck and on your it what? got it got stuck on the vac hose. For my, mm. at that time, I had a navigator in the pool and it got stuck on the hose for that. Okay, fine. It's not good with other pets. It needs to be an only pet. So take the navigator I have out. It goes all the around one the that pool. I, The one that I have has a sun shelf or a tanning ledge, what have you, with some ledge. What are they called? Ledge loungers. I always, I always want to say like lounge. Lizards. Ledgers. Lounge lizards. Ledge lounge. Okay, Ledge gotcha. Loungers. Got it. And it gets stuck Up between the okay. chairs. Yeah. So I threw a bunch of debris out to test it out. I would say it captured about 80, 85% of the debris. The other 15% hit the floor. And the question here is Is this a good well, did product? Did you throw dirt or like leaves, leaves and twigs okay. and, you know, swirl? One one dead switches because those things don't float. 
Switches? You mean like with, that you witches. hit people with? Oh, I okay. said witches. Now, anyway. Because witches float. That's true. So I toss the stuff out there. I let it run around overnight. I come back. It's got about 80, 85% of the debris out. Thing works pretty darn good, actually, in doing what they say it does. Then mm-hmm. they also advertise that you can put a chlorine tablet in it. And it'll be your automatic chlorine floater as it drifts around. At least this is from back then. I don't know if they still do that or not. But to me, I thought that was a dumb idea. So I didn't do that. The unit did work well. But where would I use this? Who would I sell it to? So my customers have service. They have me. And most of them already have automatic cleaners or in-floor cleaning. So do they need an automatic skimmer? That was the question. And I couldn't think of a scenario where this would be a great add-on product for any of my customers on my route as I traveled around, like this is going to be a good product that they need. Okay. But what about people that don't have skimmers? How many customers do you have that don't have skimmers? I mean, not a lot, but you do run into them. It's not like they don't exist. The only thing they I They either think don't of... have one because they have a an Infinity Edge, which I do have a couple of those, so I don't have skimmers in them at all. And the Infinity Edge doesn't really work all that great for shit in the middle of the fucking Okay, pool. so there's an example where it okay, might be so good. Okay, so they don't have a skimmer. Also, somebody Some might have do. their skimmer. Some of them do, but I have I have a couple that do not have skimmers at okay. all. Gotcha. Um And then... Uh, I hadn't considered that. You made me forget. You made me forget. Oh, capped. What if their skimmer is broken and they've capped it off as a temporary situation to a leak? So you're talking about somebody who skimped on a repair and this could be the temporary solution. I guess they could buy a $500 automatic skimmer. Well, aren't skimmers like $5,000? I guess it depends on who you go to to have that installed. Well, I know like the actual parts, like 1500 fucking dollars and then have somebody chip that shit out and reinstall it. Like, stop it. Stop I've it. been I've been seeing that they're like, maybe that's maybe that's retail cost, I guess, maybe then 15, maybe five, five to twelve hundred dollars is what I I've sold seen. white goods for a living from a company that manufactured skimmers in the 70s. And I would have been it wasn't in the fucking 70s. <laughs> <laughs> listen well, so all right anyway. so good product works great above ground pool where there's already not good circulation i think it'd be mm. fantastic there above mm-hmm. ground pools notoriously and then put have the tab in crappy there. crappy circulation they need and the then, floating right yeah they need the floating chlorinator the send mm-hmm. that sucker off around in there i think great. that's the perfect application for it but unless i have a route have... full of above ground pools i'm not going to say this is a good product for service companies to sell or if you don't, or if you have infinity edges. Retail, maybe. Service, I don't see it. But that's my opinion. You might think differently. If you sell them as part of your service related business, send us an email. Let us know. Tell us. Talkingpools tell, at gmail.com. Yeah, start it out in the subject matter. Rudy, you're wrong. That'll Ow. get my attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what else you got? Somebody sent you a spinner Rooney. I know that's not the name. Go ahead. Tell them a the real name. Spinneroni. Are you talking about the Cyclone filter cleaner? I am talking about that. You want to give us the skinny on this one? I love it. So my initial review, if you guys listen to it, I, I it wasn't that great of a review. Not that it wasn't good. I didn't have anything bad to say. I just didn't feel like at the time that um, it would work for like a large company just because... I could imagine, you know, you giving it to a tech like uh, Mr. Fucking, I only have one jug of chlorine left over here. You know, first of all, is he even going to use it? I doubt it. And second, he's probably going to break it. So that was just where I was coming from. Also, for some reason, and it still happens occasionally, it makes me dizzy if I look right at it while it's spinning. So don't stare directly into the spin. Do not stare directly into it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me and I'm fucking weird and it's I'm the only one with this issue, I guess. I don't know. If I like if I'm standing there looking at it and like watching it spin, I start to get kind of s- motion sickness, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I love it. I cannot clean a filter without it. I think I remember one of your initial thoughts, and I agreed with you, is that it, it does come at a bit of a price. And it is a little bit pricey. Yes. We didn't know initially 
if the function of the unit justified the price tag. But then you came that, back not later at, on. Not at first. Yeah, right. because when we had when we had talked about it, I had only had it for like a week or something like that. And um, you know, I don't I don't I w- I didn't use it a whole lot. I I used it, but then as I started to use it more and more, and then I was like, wow, this actually really does help because it does everything that um Jordan, right, that was his name it does everything that he wanted it to do like what the problems he wanted them to solve it does all of that you don't have to bend down you're not like standing hunched over you're not you know it spins itself basically so i don't know how the t-ball thing works again i've seen better pictures of it after you and i have talked about it i saw somebody else post it i was picturing like a t-ball stand not like an actual like batting tee i was thinking of like tee ball so i was like that sounds kind of dumb <laughs> but- <laughs> so all right so you're saying that this product is worth the cost i believe and i believe it to be yes and i think that if i had been able to use someone's and like i'm speaking of from when i was running my own business i definitely would have saved up and gotten it okay for myself but I do like toys, but I don't know. It's worth it. I, I I love the thing. I think it's great. The Sutro. Are you familiar never, with that? It looks like I know a what floating, it is. Um, water thermos thing. Big. Does green it go in the thing. skimmer? No, it just floats around the pool. You can tie it mm-hmm. off to like a ladder or something like that. And inside of this unit, it, there's a photometer. How is it different from the fin thing that was going around? I don't know what the fin thing is, so I can't speak on that. It's I... the same thing. Oh, I think this is much. the predecessor to the fin. Or okay. this came after. I think it's designed by the same guy now that I think about the, it. The PHN. Right. PHN. This moved over to this is a like different unit from the same guy at a different company. Now his own company. Something along those lines. Don't quote me on any of that. I could be completely wrong. That's the way I think I remembered it. Anyway, the unit itself loved it, but not for service. Here's why. It tests the water by itself. It it coordinates with an app. It gives you the water test results. And then it also tells you what you need to add to correct the water chemistry. Fine. I found it to be deadly accurate. Nice. But... You couldn't use it for service, like if you had it in the pool and then be able to have the service professional connect to the app and then you know what you're rolling up on once you get there? I was told that there was not a way to make the information unaccessible to the homeowner. So they would get all the same instructions, the same readings and everything that I got, which I didn't like. I want the readings. I want to be the one that has to go fix it. I don't want them to have the answers on their own. The other thing I didn't like about it, it tests the water three times a day. And then that uses up the... uh, That uses up the reagents. So at three times a day, it lasts 30 days. And there's a subscription to get more reagents. I think it was 30 bucks at the time, 30 bucks every time. So 30 bucks a month for 12 months, 90. So 90... Do the math so I can get my mushrooms. Right now, no. Right now, you're... Testing the water in residential pools how often? Once a week. Okay. So do we need to go from once a week to three times a day? That's excessive. Or is that one cartridge that can do 90 tests enough for me for an entire year in a residential pool that I'm taking care of with a once a week visit? I don't know. Did you just ask me a math question and I haven't eaten any food? I just asked you if testing the water only one time a week in a residential pool is okay for a service company. It works for me. And it works for everyone else. That was my point. So Ah. for a pool owner who's going to use this on their own, I think it's probably fine. I still think it probably tests the water more often than is necessary, but the unit does work and it does work well. And you can't change that setting or anything like that? No, unfortunately. Mm. And it also does not do every single test that you perform. Although at that time, they were working on adding 
additional tests to the unit. So it just does what, like chlorine and pH? Chlorine, pH, total alkalinity. I don't recall if it did calcium hardness or not. I know that cyanuric acid was one that I asked about that it had not been doing yet at that time. Rudy and Andrea will be right back with more Flock at Fridays after these messages. Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable, and these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with a pro's time and comfort in mind, the patented double locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleanings faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical cost and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at blu-rayxl.com. Blu-ray all day. Do you remember when chlorine and acid were impossible to find during the pandemic? The, the only place that anybody seemed to have anything was Leslie's. Did you know that they sell wholesale to the trade? I use that program. The Leslie's Pro program. So there's about 900 of those locations all over the country now. It, well, I didn't know that. That's a lot. They don't keep banker's hours. Then they're open a little bit later into the night, and they're open Saturdays and Sundays. But they sell retail. Don't they have their own installers? So does the largest wholesale distributor of pool supplies in the country. They purchased that large chain of retail stores, but also service, installation, and repairs now. I know Leslie's doesn't do service because I know several pool companies, self-included, that were part of the Pro Partner Program, which can provide Leslie's pros with customer referrals for weekly cleanings and chemical maintenance to you. If any of our listeners are interested in becoming a pro partner or the best wholesale pricing Leslie's can offer, visit your local Leslie's retail location or Email commercial at lesl.com. Commercial at lesl.com. Okay, cool. Pool Magazine is the hottest new publication for the pool and spa industry. Featuring up-to-the-minute news on what's happening in the pool world in a fresh new stylized format with our mobile-friendly app. Pool Magazine is the app for keeping your fingers on the pulse of the pool industry. You'll find featured news, editorials, podcasts, videos, and more on the Pool Magazine app. Download on Google Play and the App Store. We do have a listener question this week. And again, this is for the one and only What the Flock Talking Pools podcast hat. Again, to get one of these, you send in a question, send it to talkingpools at gmail.com. If we use your question on the show and you are a legitimate pool company, that's a big part of this, we will send you a hat. So make sure you send us the name of your business, also your mailing address as well. This week, our question is from Derek Black Bear. He's of Black Bear Pools out in Anaheim, California. And his question is... I've been approached by someone looking to sell about 20 pools. I don't know this person, so I'm wondering how to go about this. Is this something looked down upon since they aren't customers earned from word of mouth from good service? What are the pros and cons? Well, Derek, to answer your question, I brought in pool route trader extraordinaire, Joe Wilmot. He owns and operates Pool Trader, which is an online site that is free to join, but helps individuals to sell, buy, and trade routes, equipment, all things in the pool industry. Joe, what do we have to say to Derek about his question here? Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Uh, 
funny thing i think i've actually spoken with this person he black bear pools that sounds very familiar i feel like our our paths may have crossed in years past but um yeah great question uh especially uh that is kind of an alarming thing if you're if you've been approached out of nowhere with somebody looking to sell um as odd as it might seem it's not it's not an unusual thing pool routes are bought and sold all the time and uh especially during economic times like right now uh there's a lot of people looking to sell um so just like with anything um you know purchasing a car purchasing anything else how do you go about it well you want to find out the information so at this point in time get to know this person get to feel it out uh if it if something doesn't seem right then obviously you know there's no sense in in proceeding forward with looking to buy something that you feel uncomfortable with but uh, how long have they been in business? You know, where are their accounts located? Generally, you're probably not going to get addresses at this point. Um, and then you're going to go through the whole thing. Everything you would ask, uh, what are you, you know, what are you charging? Are you all inclusive? Are you plus chems? Um, how many of the accounts have uh, cartridge filters or DE filters? So there's that extra revenue that might come in. You'll ask all of those pertinent questions being a service uh, a pool service company anyway. All of these things you need to know because the next thing that comes up is how much. So then all of these things will dictate it. You know, right now I will tell you the average price private party, this is pool person to pool person. Uh, we're not talking about uh, what's for sale on brokers websites or uh, somebody from a white collar background getting into the pool industry at full retail price. But right now the average is about eight times monthly earning. So for easy math, if somebody's charging $100 per month, that account would be worth $800. That's just simple math. Nobody freak out that I mentioned $100 <laughs> per month pool service. But that's the conversation that you'll start to have. What do you want? Uh, what do they want for it? Um, and, then, uh, and then beyond that, then you're gonna start talking about terms. If it makes sense for you, Derek, if the route is close enough, if these are all accounts that are in your general area and it makes sense to add 20 to your route, then by all means, it's worth looking more into. Um, and I think part of the question, uh, was part of the question, Rudy, do, is it looked down upon? Was that, did yeah. you get the feeling that? I did, I have this question. That's kind of a unique question here. And he's asking, how will this be perceived if he buys accounts versus growing them organically? Ah, well, if he's asking how it's perceived within the local pool service community, I would I would say you're gonna get you're gonna get strong opinions on both sides. You're gonna get people that say never buy pools or buying pools is the easiest and quickest way. So just if I, I think maybe that question is more tailored to how will the customers respond to a new face showing up? That's I'm hoping ah. that's what I'm asking. Maybe so, that is what he's asking. Okay. That, and that's a fantastic question. Yes. Um, I would just in general, uh, you, you can well expect the average, you know, I'm talking average numbers here, just on the years of experience I have right off the bat, you can kind of figure 20, uh, uh, 10% will probably not like you. Nothing that you did, not, not, not related to your service. They just don't want to see another face in the backyard. So 20 accounts, you probably lose two or three right off the bat. Now, if it's possible, if you're able, if you get a good vibe from this, this other service, uh, they seem legit, you know, maybe it's just a, maybe it's just a baby boomer looking to retire. Maybe we got an old veteran pool pro that he's down, he or she's down to their last 20 pools and they're just looking to sell them for a little cash. That's totally appropriate. And our industry is going to start seeing that a lot more as our veteran uh, pool services uh, as they get older and older. So if that's the case, the best way I can tell you, if you are able to ride with this person and go to these pools um, yourself, if you're able to make face-to-face -face contact and they're able to introduce you to each of these customers at least once, and, and the transition has started to become much more easy, much more palatable of a transaction, the likelihood you're going to lose any goes down from there. They meet you. Uh, let's just call the other pool guy, Joe. 
It's like Joe hands you off. It's like, you know, this is Derek. He's going to be taken over. As you know, I'm retiring. Or maybe they're just moving out of state. People's circumstances change all the time. That's that's another reason a lot of sales happen. Um, just letting that face-to-face -face transaction happen. And then the transition can be really smooth. Um, and then at that point, if you need any more assistance on how the transaction goes, um, this goes for anybody, you are welcome to reach out to me, uh, joe.pulltrader at gmail.com. Um, if you ever have any questions on how the transaction takes place or what you can do or what certain paperwork you should have in place to protect yourself, et cetera, et cetera, I'm more than happy uh, to offer I consult with lots of pool guys all the time, but, um, that's yeah, fantastic. That, that's yeah. fantastic. Joe, let me ask you this because from my experience, just from what I've seen, I mean, a big part of it is, is what they're charging right now, what their fee is. And if it's a, if it's a livable rate, I mean, if you just piggybacking on your answer to Derek's question, if I pick up a route where I'm going to have to raise everybody's pricing because it's just not taking in enough money so that it's worth doing, then I'm going to have a lot of problems. But if they're already charging the appropriate rate for the area and it's just plug and play, then we have a much, much easier go of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. If things, yeah, if it's even, and that, that's, that's another thing that's been creeping up um, or a more common question that I've been getting asked is, uh, this looks like a screaming deal. Like they're only asking two or three months revenue, but the rate that they're charging is so far below market or on the lower end of the market, it still doesn't make sense. You know, something can be, it's just because something's cheap doesn't make it a good purchase. Now, the and each individual service company will have to weigh the pros and cons on that. If it's right smack dab in the middle of your service area, and it's really going to tighten things up, you could still consider it, but more often than not, those lower priced accounts, um, they're often going to be more headache than they are, uh, a, you know, a good thing to bring into your company. Even if, like I said, they're only asking, the seller's only asking a couple of months uh, worth of revenue. Is it really something that you want to take on uh, to where maybe you'll just, maybe you might even just break even. You're going to work for two or three months and then realize I really didn't want to bring these on anyway. So that's why that's why going through the evaluation and assessing what are these truly worth and is it worth my time? That's the number one question you got to ask. Is this is this going to help or hinder my business moving forward? And like Joe said a moment ago, if something doesn't feel right about it, walk away. Joe, how do they get you again? If they need anybody has any questions about buying selling swapping trading routes you are free to email me it's joe.pulltrader at gmail.com or you can follow me on instagram i am pool trader joe you're free to shoot me a message on there you can also find me on facebook um any of those means you're anyone is welcome to reach out to me anytime happy to help and derek congratulations there is a what the flock talking pools podcast hat on its way out to anaheim for you buddy Thank you for sending in the question. We appreciate you. Skim a round. That's one that I've seen. And Have you seen their claims? I've not seen their claims. To me, it Have looks you seen like their a knockoff Facebook of ads? <laughs> the old American products, Admiral Skimmer with the floating weir. That's what it looks like to me. A knockoff of that. Well, so first of all, their little commercial that plays on Facebook is hilarious because they go from a yucky green swamp pool to a nice crystal clear sparkling blue pool just by changing out the skimmer basket. What is it made out of magic erasers? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, so so right, their well, whole I thing it. is their, their, Bernoulli, Bernoulli effect. Bernoulli, right? Bernoulli. Bernoulli. Effect. Okay. So yeah. That's the same. That's effect their that whole planes used to fly. That's their whole claim of why this skimmer basket works better than any other skimmer basket you could possibly buy, which is 40, 40. Is it $40? It's $40. Can't tell you. Don't know. I can. not seen one. It's $40. So you're supposed to take this, your old skimmer basket out. You put this new skimmer basket in. It's cylindrically shaped, and then it's got 
a ring around it, like like the rings of Saturn. <laughs> it's got a flat plastic like ring around the middle of it, and which you theoretically can adjust because it's got little notches on the sides of the top part of it, and then you can, how, depending on how low the skimmer sits, the basket sits, you're supposed to adjust it. Nobody ever does, which is part of why. Okay, I won't. You said not to be too mean. I was going to say it's part of what makes it stupid. So, anyway, then, and also, too, the basket floats. Don't when say it's it, stupid. You can say that you didn't stupid. like it for service because I did not enjoy this product for any reason for service or for use at home by yourself. So, it does, you don't think it benefits the homeowner at all either. That's no. what you're saying. And it Correct. doesn't. And I don't think it benefits anyone except for the company that's selling it for forty dollars. What happened when the pump shut off? Did the debris stay in the basket, or was it set up so that it could float out? Do you take the weir flap out when you're using it? I don't know. Um, most people do take the weir take the weir thing out, uh, which then al- it does allow stuff to float back out. Or I'm sorry, it claims that it doesn't because and it gets trapped inside the basket. So the way that the basket is shaped, there's like a little cage on top. But does it? And it's, I, I've not, I'm never there when the pools are off. I don't know. Don't you shut them off like to clean something? Some sometimes I do. So I, you know, I guess it doesn't come out of the because it gets trapped inside the basket. That's fine. But they're a pain in the ass because they they're sometimes they can be hard to pull out, and then the very bo- like it separates into two sections. So you can either smack it and like break it apart and put it back together. Intentionally, or you gotta like you can do it intentionally. Sometimes it happens unintentionally, which is super aggravating. But when sometimes when the pump shuts off, the basket will float up. I was going to ask about that next. Okay. Yes. So people will put a rock in there, but that defeats the whole purpose of their Bernoulli thing. It's like supposed to go up and down. Okay. Gotcha. So they want it to float to keep the debris in it when the pump shuts off, which again, the whole thing to me, if you, and I think Pentair still has it. I don't know what they call the skimmer now, but the um, AP, admiral skimmer from back in the day big old basket with the float inside of it the round float that goes up when the pump shuts off that works as a floating weir for it you follow to me it sounds like it's a rip off of that but so it does kind of grab stuff it does have like a benefit when it works when you when you when you set it up correctly it does work how it's supposed to most people do not set it up correctly and from a service standpoint they are a pain in the ass to deal with to empty the baskets and especially if they have the floating they have a floating one where you hook it up to your uh suction cleaner line and it will float like a floating skimmer gotcha awful okay awful awful vac daddy never used it they sent me one i've checked it out i've mentioned before i'm not a fan of the name but that's okay some people like it. That's fine. That is a well-made, powerful vacuum. It has a small what? bag. Are you paying attention? Of course. Okay. So it's a well-made, powerful bat vacuum. It has a small bag. It's heavy. It requires an electrical outlet, but it does have a transformer that drops down the voltage. But this thing is super powerful, and it does appear to be extremely well made. Now, with that said, it's heavy. And before, remember I said we automatically perceive things that are heavy to be good in our Mm -hmm. minds? Well, at the end of your telepole, as you're vacuuming, not so much. Because it becomes a little bit awkward. Does it get flimsy? It doesn't get flimsy, but it is a little bit awkward and it does make it harder to steer the vacuum. And of course, and this does not have its own vac head. You have to use an actual regular vac head for plaster pools or for vinyl if that's what you're doing. So it does interfere with the steering. I see. I see. So that to me is problematic. You have to have 
enough outlets surrounding the pool. Now, the cord is really, really long, but on your larger pool, you will have to have multiple outlets around the pool so that you can plug this in. So if you're looking at using it for a commercial facility or a rec center, or even just a home that has large pool, you're going to need to have a good amount of outlets on the outside. Or a really long pole. No, because there's a cord attached to it. The pole's not going to make a oh. difference. It has to be plugged into a wall. So, I see. so we have that. It does attach easy enough. But again, it is heavy. And it is powerful, which I find in a lot of cases that you're wrestling with it because it became stuck to the floor of the pool. Now, I don't use a cheap vac head. I have a Pentair, whatever, whatever, whatever. I can't tell you what model it is off the top of my head, but it's a well-made, solid, commonly used vac head. And I find that it gets stuck to the floor of the pool. This is plaster pools, not vinyl pools. The unit's heavy. It also comes in at a price tag similar to Riptide and Hammerhead. And this is a small, compact handheld that attaches to a telepole. So as far as perceived value goes, I don't see it. I do see it as possibly something somebody with a smaller route could use. Maybe if they had pools on a golf course where they just go from house to house to house with this thing all set up. And maybe it's, you know, version because it's not a cheaply made product. It's very, very nice. The version of these two other massive behemoth cleaners that we're more familiar with. So I think here, one of the things, the solution here is the motor, because that would solve all of the problems I just mentioned. Downsize the pump that's inside the unit. That would decrease the cost of the unit. That would decrease the weight of the unit. That would prevent the unit from getting the vac head stuck to the floor of the pool then maybe good for smaller service companies for homeowners i think if you just have it for your one backyard pool and you're in a situation where it's not getting stuck to the floor and you're wrestling with it it's probably fine but i think the first person sometimes somebody's out there with this thing and it gets stuck to the floor of the pool they're bringing it back to their retailer wet in a box and returning it for their money i believe i this have a question be, hold this on this could be a good product for service companies if they went with a smaller pump. The reason why? What's the reason it's getting stuck to the floor? Because the suction is too, too much powerful. Suction? Yes. Hmm. Which a smaller pump would resolve that issue. Now, they do have an attachment to use this for vac to waste. So it can be looked at as a portable vac to waste pump where you have. How does that work? You attach a hose to the back of the unit and it draws it out and pushes it out right across the yard wherever you aim the hose to. A lot of folks have commented on the size of the bag and the amount of debris that the bag would be able to catch also, which is a fact. It is a small bag, but the company argues that you can replace the bag so quickly that it doesn't cut into the time of vacuuming the pool. Except and for emptying a bag is like 10 fucking minutes. No, not on this unit. To do oh. this on this unit, it is really probably just one or two minutes. They're not wrong. It does empty very, very quickly. Like I said, it has some good points. I think everything comes back to the size of the motor that they're using in the unit. I know they wanted it to be super powerful. Maybe it's too powerful. Go with a smaller motor. You get a lower price tag. You get a lighter unit, which is easier to control, and you don't stick to the floor anymore. And then I think maybe they have something. There we go. Advice on how to fix problems from Rudy. I was going to say. <laughs> Black and Decker pump. Go. Have, no, I'm not. I've never. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen one in person. I don't want to talk about that. At the pool show. That's it. <clears throat> so the good, the bad, and the ugly. They did send me one. And I did and? hook it up and run it for a year. And, and I will say this. Is that, is that even still a thing? <laughs> The Black & Decker pump? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen one in a little bit, but that's not the point. So here's the thing. It works. The pump works well. It's easy to program. It's easy to hook up. 
with exception to the top nut that comes out on the discharge for the wet end because the nut is too close to the lid of the pump that you have no room to get your hands around it. Mm. You're, it just doesn't twist properly because of that. Disassembly. You have to take no the control panel off where you program it off before you can remove the bolts that attach the pump motor to the wet end. I did not. Mm. I did not recognize the savings in using that unit in my electricity when compared to the prior of the year prior year where I had a Dura glass. One same horsepower, one and a half horsepower Dura glass replaced with one and a half horsepower Black and Decker pump. Ran the pump at the speeds that I set up because you know I have a flow meter on my system mm-hmm. to make sure that I got the correct turnover rate. And I did not recognize the savings over that door glass pump in electrical consumption. Now, okay, fine. But I did add a different variable speed pump this year, several months back. I went with the Aquastar Pool Products Pipeline variable speed pump. And I put that ah, on. You did get a pump. I did. I went with that one. <clears throat> I put that on and running it at the same flow rate to get the turnover rate that I need I have recognized a decrease in the electrical consumption. Of course, it's of my whole home, but in that same time frame, I also had my granddaughter move in. So we have a whole additional person here, which means more water, more food, more TV, more electric, all of that stuff. So that the big change is not something that would have decreased electric costs. It would have actually increased it. Plus, like everyone else in the country, my rates have gone up since last year. But I am still now since I switched pumps. And again, call it what you want. It's I can't, you know, it's household electric to household electric, not pump to pump specifically. But my electric bills are less than they were last year. And the only significant change was my granddaughter moved in and I put this pump on the pool. So I would say that. So aside from the fact that it does work, it does run. I had no problems with it whatsoever. It was easy to program. It was not challenging to hook up except for that one nut that I mentioned. I just did not see the electrical savings from the unit that I expected out of a (laughs) variable speed pump. Other thing I did not like about that pump was that they don't have any dealer pricing in order for a pool service company to purchase it you will purchase it at the same exact price as a homeowner will off amazon boo there has to be room in there for you to make money lastly i want to talk about the big ass round bristle brush i don't know what the name of it it's a 360 degree bristle brush it looks like a giant caterpillar to me in fact if you look at the one through Black and Decker, it has those same Black and Decker colors. It looks exactly like that one orange and black caterpillar that you always see around, that fuzzy sucker. Looks like it'll be a good idea. It's big. It's huge. It's probably going to be great for different aspects. I bring it to the pool. I try it out. Really, really good for corners. Mm. The problem with the brush, that not that it doesn't brush well. It brushes fantastically. It seems solid. It's nicely made. But on the back draw... It creates a bunch more resistance than the brushes that we're used to using. So by the time that you get to the end of the pool, it's a little bit more of a workout. Why are you looking? You push, you pull. So pushing, no problem. Pulling, there's more resistance. When do you pull? When you're brushing. Don't you move the brush back up as you you brush up and down? Or you you just push it down and leave it there? I Well, I mean, I do lift it back up. Yes, but I just lift it back up i don't i don't, don't do push a and pull as you multi-directional move. scrub no no just up and down i'm talking about just I, pulling it back through the water and pushing it down against the wall uh, i'm not talking about pushing it against the wall as i pull up so i follow what you're saying uh, okay oh, against God, the oh wall God. on the you way said, down I'm like, then through wow the you water, brush really hard <laughs> then through the water on the way i am a brushing motherfucker i'll tell you what i was gonna say please Pulling it back up, it does create a bit more resistance because of the size. And then uh, I could not that makes, see. I see, I see, I see, I see. I'm assuming it's something that you'll get used to. And I can't knock so, it too badly because I use, I still use a yellow fiberglass telepole from back in the day. So I know my pull weighs like 20 pounds. 
and people complain about the weight of those and getting used to it. So, but this brush will add resistance to it and it does make it harder to brush mm -hmm. at least until you get used to it, which is going to wear you out quicker. Are you talking about the brand new one that they just, that I saw the dude post on Facebook? It's all steel. Or are you talking about their normal one? The normal one with the vinyl bristles. Okay. Nylon bristles. Excuse oh, me. it's vine. Okay. Nylon. So they just came out with a steel bristle one and I want to try it. I uh, think they're probably good for the corners of steps and things like that. But to tell you but, the truth, my AB 18 inch uh, brush was good for the corner of steps too. I've never had a problem with that brush. They yeah, lasted. but you know what? I use those brushes to clean my tiles. So I think that that would be great for getting up underneath the coping and in the corners of the pools. It might be sometimes the AB, for that. Sometimes the AB brush doesn't do corners in the tile up underneath the coping so well. well there and you I go. don't like to use, I do, I, I use the adjust a brush for certain applications, but um, so for the most part, I like to use a brush with steel on it, especially if I'm trying to get the algae out of the grout lines. I feel like it does a much better job. I could definitely see that 360 all steel brush in my truck. So there you go. Just one, two, just two pool pros opinions on some of the new stuff that's out there that works. It's a good product, just either is or isn't for service. That's been our show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Yeah, so if you have questions and you want a hat, email us, talkingpools at gmail.com. And you have to include your um, contact info, address, company name. Please be a real person. And if we and use your cool question. Company. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, like, like yeah, for, for real. Although I don't see why somebody who's not a real pool company would want to would Wear want this pool amazing, swag. Amazing yeah. what the flock cap. Exactly. Um, so yeah, anyway, follow us, like us, leave us a nice review. If that's still a thing, that I think it's still a thing. I think people still do that. I think it still helps. It does. Okay. Leave us leave, leave us reviews wherever you listen, because we're available everywhere. Anyway, that's it. Talkingpools at gmail.com and have a great week what's your problem oh my Rudy? god <laughs> hey everybody hungry. be good be safe